Hello and welcome to another modern video. Today we're going to be trying out John's Sacrifice. This is a deck list by Pond and Wine. Pond was kind enough to use, uh, make use of the donation deck list option, which you can find in the description of the video. I requested me, me play this uh, deck list of his, and we're going to be trying that out in a modern league right now. So what we're talking about here is uh, we're talking about a sacrifice deck. This is uh, you know going uh, with Witches Oven and Cauldron Familiar. This is uh, a combination that is quite powerful powerful not only in formats like standard where it was actually banned uh, but also formats like uh, historic which is i think the only format where lurus is still legal and you can do this stuff with lurus uh, but yeah obviously we can't play lurus anymore so what that does is it opens up room for playing other cards that are really really good and really really synergistic like a gris the hunger tide and mayhem devil Devil actually synergizes with a bunch of the things that we got going on in this deck list, so we're just going to go over them real quick. Number one, uh, this is uh, a deck that makes really great use of Ravenous Squirrel. This is a one mana and common from Modern Horizons one, uh, Modern Horizons two, sorry, that nobody really batted an eye for uh, during previous season and multiple months afterwards. Like it's almost been like a year since this card was, was released, and finally people are starting to catch on. Um, and this card grows so so quickly because this grows not only when you get your your uh, Cauldron Familiar in, which is Oven combo going, but it also grows off of your or Mistress Bubble Sacrifices, and it also grows off of your Ragaman Treasure Sacrifices, which is not a small thing. Uh, same thing also applies with Grist uh, activations as well, like when you minus two a uh, Grist, you get to grow your Squirrel. You also get to trigger your Mayhem Devil, and then you also get the ability to kill, you know, whatever it is that you wanted to kill with the Grist as well. So Grist, uh, really, really powerful here, super synergistic with everything else that's going on with the deck. Uh, we also have access to Ragavan, of course, this card is absolutely busted, but not only is it, you know, just doing the monkey thing, which, which it always does in every deck that plays it, but it's also quite powerful in this shell because of all the sacrifice synergies that we got going on with treasures. So, monkey can by itself grow your Ravenous Squirrel, trigger your Mayhem Devil, help you cast your, spell, uh, your spells ahead of curve. So, obviously, monkey is busted in every deck that it's in, but it's actually particularly uh, busted in this one because it's very, very synergistic. Uh, we also have access to Renin 6, and a couple of uh, interactive spells in Thoughtseize and Lightning Bolt. Uh, the last uh, things that we got going on are a uh, one Springleaf Drum, which we can go fetch with our Ursa Saga, because we are an Ursa Saga deck. By the way, when Saga gets sacrifices, it, it gets sacrificed, it also triggers your Mayhem Devil, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we are a Saga deck, so that's why Renan 6 is extra powerful in this shell. And then Saga can go find your Springleaf Drum, your Witch's Oven to get your combo going, or Mistress Bubble to just basically turn into a card for free. Uh, the rest of the mana base is fairly straightforward. We're just based in black and red. We only have two green spells in Renan 6 and Grist, including the sideboard. So uh, because of that, like green is barely a splash. Like there's the activation of the squirrel as well, but it's, it's a very, very small splash. So you're going to see that we're playing basic mountain, basic swamp. We're also playing Castle Loctwain and one copy of Sockinson Crucible of Defiance. We're not playing Boseju because, you know, we are not the base green deck. So like we don't even have a basic forest, right? Uh, we do have some Stomping Ground and Overgrown Tomb in order to help us cast our Ruin Spells, but that's really about it. So, uh, that's going to be the main deck. Uh, I'm I'm already getting myself mentally prepared to, <laughs> to make a ton of mistakes with this deck. There is a lot going on. Uh, th there's a lot of little synergies and there's a lot of percentages to be gained in terms of uh, using proper sequencing and stuff like that. So I'm expecting to have a lot of fun as I, as I try this deck and figure out all of the little intricacies that the deck presents. Uh, well, this is, you know, a Giganta deck because companions are still broken, even though Loros was banned, like only makes the other companions even more uh, more exciting because even whenever you have, we're in a, a spot where, you know, maybe your Giganta is not going to take over the game by itself, it's free. So <laughs> it's definitely much better as a free card in your cyborg than it is, uh, you know, uh, as, as another cyborg card that you could be playing. A couple of copies of Nihil Spellbomb uh, because we want to be able to... <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to answer graveyards, uh, also Pirate Spellbomb and Relic of Progenitus, all of these cards we can just find off of our Ursa Saga, so we have a little bit of synergy going on there. Engineered Explosives, uh, it's going to be our way to answer Death Shadows and whatnot. Emrakul, the Aeon Stone exclusively against Mill, of course. Alpine Moon against the Trons, the Amulets, the Valak decks, uh, and the Saga decks of the world. And a couple of copies of Fatal Push as extra interaction against the... Um, the decks that have creatures that we're interested in killing, be it a Hammer, be it Death Shadow, 
Uh, we don't have, really have ways of getting rid of Merc type, so that's going to be interesting. Like if we do get a good paired against Merc type, because Grist is our only answer. So that's definitely going to be interesting to see how we can how we can maneuver that. Uh, hopefully you will enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You can support the channel for free by, by doing so. And then you also can leave a comment below uh, if you have any thoughts, any ideas, any anything that you liked, anything that you didn't like. And again, if you're interested in any other services like coaching and, uh, you know, donation decklist option like the one that we're doing today, uh, you can find all of that information in the description of the video. Without further ado, let's jump into a modern league. See you there. All right, here we go for round number one. Uh, turn one monkey, okay. We don't get a redraw. We, we really need to find the land, but we have like a turn one monkey and a way to clear the a way to clear the uh, the way for it to connect. So I don't think we're we're shipping this on the play. I guess we can bubble my opponent. Is there any way that I lead on on like witches open? There just isn't. So I'm just gonna. I'm gonna play around this card, I guess, by playing the by uh, using bubble on my opponent's upkeep. I think. So I'm gonna start there. Play shock, cast monkey, and I I guess I want to actually know what's on top of their deck as opposed to to this. So let's see what we're playing against. Could be anything. Cause wow. <laughs> All right, um, punished for not cracking the bubble. <laughs> Super punished for not cracking the bubble. Um, I was not expecting that. <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. Um, I guess I'm just going to submit the same 60 and call it a day. Um, what could my opponent be doing? Also, just realize how my entire cyber is one drops. <laughs> like there's, there's one drops, engineer explosives, Emra cool, and the companion. That's it. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, well, uh, yeah, we're just gonna submit the same and see what happens. Literally no idea what we could be playing against, uh, but still, I think I'm gonna keep this hand. We don't have green mana for Grist, but this can go find um, the thingy, the. Spring with Trump. And we have Witches Soven, Familiar. Uh, we also have Double Saga. Opponent doesn't even know. Like opponent conceded, but like they didn't even they didn't even see the cards that we are playing. So I'm not sure my opponent's concession was very good. So let's go. Familiar. I definitely was not expecting elves, I'll tell you that much. Particularly no when elves has like a million ways to stop a monkey. Like you can just block it a gazillion different ways. They have so many random one ones. If they want to really go wide, they can actually bounce a forest and like untap this and keep going. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of stuff for one single turn. Um I could go for Croxa here, but that's that's not what we're about here. So um, which is open is nice because it allows us to start draining my opponent, and it also has um, means that I can block their stuff, you know, indefinitely, which is very nice. Also, having another uh, artifact in play. Ugh. One, two, three, four. Because my opponent is killing me next turn, I guess. Can't activate right now, but I should die next turn. So I need to find, I guess a green source for Grist would do it, because I can just, it means that the Grist dies, but it means that I don't die. So me not dying, I think it's a good deal. <laughs> Unclear, but. Um, so our best draw would be, Ooh, Mayhem Devil. Mayhem Devil would be sick here. Mayhem Devil would be sick. So I think that I want to leave the food token here because my best draw again is Mayhem Devil and that means that I get to sack food token, get back familiar, uh, kill this thing. Okay, that's not a Mayhem Devil. Uh, 
It's also not a green source either. So I don't think this does anything for us. So they tap here, everything gets overrun. That's three, six. Um, I guess they're going to tap these three, right? So that's going to be um, three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, and then one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm just, just dead. All right, we know what we're up against now. So Fatal Push, good. Lightning Bolt, also good. Um, Engineering Explosives, probably good. I'm not super high on the explosives, actually. Also not super high on the Thought Seizes. I guess I'd rather have the explosives than the Thought Seize. Right, let's go with this. Um, elves. Haven't played against Elves in a minute. Haven't played against Elves in a minute. Uh, I imagine we should have a pretty good matchup, but you know, we just have to draw this bad boy. If we do, I would think that we're probably very advantaged, but if we don't, as you can saw, like our opponent can really exploit. Like that was like a turn three kill or turn four? Turn four. So turn three set up lethal, turn four actually kill me. Not bad, not half bad. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, if my opponent doesn't block my monkey, we're looking good, but I mean, I'm probably gonna keep this and get. I mean, I'm I'm just gonna crack this. It means that I don't get to grow this squirrel, which sucks. But I think that I need to find another land drop or a way to force the monkey through. Uh, but it keeps seven. Cast this. I'm gonna play bubble, and I cut all my thought seizes. If I'm mistaken, yeah, all three of them are gone. So like, I'd rather just have info about their draw step, just to with the foothills. Also, I have six value. Also, oh, that's not good. That's not good. So we don't have any info. Mm, land. I mean, I'm not gonna not attack here, right? Like, I just have to. My opponent's obviously taking the block. They're not? Oh my god. <laughs> That's kind of good. Um, they don't take the block there? Are they crazy? Well, now I'm just... I think I'm supposed to play the Grist now. I think I'm supposed to play the Grist and plus. Turn to Grist is not bad. Now the question is, do I block if my opponent attacks? And I think the answer may be no. Because if I draw land, I get to like play Devil, clear the way for Monkey, and we just, you know, kind of get away with the game. So, best choice of land. Far and away. Okay, so opponent's gonna get to do a bunch of things here. And they have the Nettle Sentinel to block. But if I draw land, I think I win very easily. Wow. A lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff which I can mow down fairly easily if I find the land. <laughs> can get rid of basically everything here if I find the land. Winding way. They drew a three. Jesus. My opponent started this turn with one Nettle Sentinel in play. <laughs> uh, 
my opponent started the turn with one Nettle Sentinel in play. And yeah, they're they're doing stuff over there. They are definitely doing stuff. We're gonna play the entire hand. Is that the dream? Just play, just literally play the entire hand. <laughs> Monkey not looking so sexy anymore. <laughs> Can we find a land? Can we find a land and have a shot? Uh, I think we actually do need the creature to be in place. I'm just gonna let this go. Land. Brutal. I'm probably sending monkey here. When it takes to trade. Unlucky. Okay, so now what? Now what? Another elf. So I probably have to minus to kill the war master so at least my opponent doesn't have a payoff and i have one creature which is bigger than my opponent's entire board we know they're drawing what is basically a blank Okay, maybe if my opponent doesn't have the payoff this turn or next turn, we may be in okay shape here. So we just had to dodge two turns. We did find a land. Uh, this triggers off, um, off of fetch lands too. So something to keep in mind. My opponent's paying costs though. Which is freaking me out. Three mana. That's a payoff. Whatever that is, that's a payoff. Just cord. Cord for a Suri. Court for Suri. Opponent can regenerate their dudes. And then next turn they tap one, two, three, and then I take um, th four. So it's one, two, three, four. That's. Ooh, I did not see that coming. Okay. Okay, that's not the end of the world. Land? Fetch land, okay. So, let's go. Basic mountain, like my, my life total actually matters a lot. Play Mayhem Devil. Next turn we're gonna get to play another Mayhem Devil and we're gonna get to sack. Um, suck a land, which means, so no good attacks for OP, Man, devil, fetch land, and now I can kill I can kill the Grist, or I can kill probably both uh, Lanor Elves. Because the thing is, my opponent is going to have 5 mana anyways, but Druid requires them to tap more creatures, meaning that it's going to make their mana a little bit more awkward. 
Oh, they have a they have a card in hand. If they top deck the core, I probably can't win. So I can't really play around that. I don't think. No, I guess I guess the the heritage is net more mana. So. So overgrown tomb. Say yes. Play familiar. Drain. And I guess I'm gonna send both Mayhem Devils at the Grist. Well, I guess I only have one. Opponent can just send three creatures into the garbage, or just like probably chomp block with the insect. That's probably their, their better play. But anything that I get to trade with here is just kind of a win for me. So, opponent has a lot of good draws. Lots of good draws here. Uh, but so do we. We also have a bunch of good draws. If they minus Grist, they can trade with one of my dudes. But then something. Ugh. So I can play Monkey and dash it. Trades with this. I think we just send everything at Grist here. Dash Monkey. Everything at Grist. Pointing could let the Grist go, but it's like the only thing they get going on. Though it's possible that they have a second Grist in hand. Although I guess if they did, they would have just minus there. So I guess it's not super likely they have a Grist in hand. Sure. So they get to eat the Cauldron Familiar for free. Which is not really that big of a deal. Okay. So my opponent have cord. Ooh, nice. So let's kill both mystics. Yep. I could have killed the nettle sentinel. Uh, nettle sentinel. I think that the elvish, uh, the mystics are way more valuable than the sentinel. Yeah, people. This is this is a weird card. It actually triggers when your opponent does stuff as well. It's just super counterintuitive. Land would be sick. Croxa. Three mana. What could my one have for three mana? A little, just a tiny bit lower on life that I'm comfortable with. That's fine. And this is, a, I think this is Sacrifice Trigger. I'm honestly not sure. I think that this, that Croxa does count towards Mayhem Devil. Yes! Yes, it does. Let's go. All right, feeling good about the about my spot here. Yeah, like that. I honestly hadn't thought about that. Otherwise, I think I would have led with playing the Croxa. Uh, yeah, this card is really messed up. This card is really messed up when it gets going. And I guess now that Lurus is banned, like this card finally has its time to shine. So pretty excited about pretty excited about that. See you next round. All right, round number two, no lander, ship it. Huh. I may get punished by this, but I think I'm going to bottom the squirrel. Squirrel is really, really good with the, with cat oven though. Point also most to six. 
blood crypt. And I think we lead a monkey. We just ask the question, put the pressure. See what we're up against. Basic forest, a royal racer, we can never win. We can never win now. I expect this matchup to be very bad for me. Particularly when I'm not hitting land drops. Explore prime time. Just gonna take the prime time here. Um, there's an argument for taking the explore, but I mean my opponent already has Titan mana, and they're they're gonna get there, right? I'm not gonna be able to to do my thing before the yeah. I mean. All right, so that was our draw. That was their draw. Saga. Starting with the attack there, not really doing anything else anyway, so. Uh, but yeah, so, so we're gonna get to at least get the cat going. The problem is if my opponent does find the prime time, they do get to spin next turn with turn timber. Not this coming turn, but the following one. And if they top deck a Titan, then we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Right now we have perfect info. We know about the basic forest. We know about the turn timber. If I were my opponent, I would play out the turn timber this turn. Since you're gonna need to play the growth timber anyway, and like now if I top the Gethotsis, I can actually just take the turn timber from their hand. Sure. Thank you. That's super good for me, actually. <laughs> um let's get um let's see if is it better for us to have double black or double red? I think double black is better, so we're gonna go for overgrown tomb. Um that's super good for me. So now we're gonna sack. I untap. I familiar. Sack once. Sack twice. Sack three times. Um, actually, that's not true. Cause I'm the the oven is not in the is not in play anymore. So I can only ping for one. It's probably still worth doing. So opponent's gonna block once again. And now second main. Play this. Sack, kill the Gracer. And now pass the turn. So now my my monkey's finally starting to do something. So opponent gets to spin here. Again, they kind of got a little bit lucky there. Because, like, they're only looking for Titan anyway. I like, guess the only thing that actually matters. They should have also used their white mana, so in case they draw T West, they, now they can't transmute. A little bit of a misplay there. Pretty tiny misplay, though. Again, if they find the Titan of the turn timber, it's not gonna matter. IMF6. Did you get their opponent? When no opponent has Simic in hand. I mean, the tank hopefully means that they didn't get there, because otherwise it's just a mean slow roll. Otherwise, this is just a very mean slow roll. Just a very mean slow roll. <laughs> I guess it's just a very mean slow roll. All right, what do you got, opponent? What do you get? Opponent's playing Hunger Balance, which is good for me because it saves me life. Can I kill this Titan? I, I think I can. So we're going to get one trigger here. We're going to get another Witch's Oven. We're going to get another trigger. Sack this. Sack food. Sack this. Um, 
suck this again, suck food again, and then we have we're gonna have the uh, the the token from the monkey. Okay. Can we draw a thoughtsies, please? I think if we draw a thoughtsies, we're gonna be golden, and we're just gonna win. Wait, can I lethal them? There's no way I can lethal them, right? Oh, come on! That's, <laughs> That's their only unknown card. Ugh. Well, opponent's better than I am. They have to kill the Mayhem Devil. I have been bested by the better player. I have been bested by the better player. Just casually spin into a Titan, into the only unknown card being a Dryad. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, yeah, we lose. Not half bad. Okay, let's do this thing. Um, Alpine Moon. Push is better than Bolt. I do like Thoughtseize. All of the other cards don't matter. Grace seems good. I could probably cut one bubble. I do think monkey is okay. I think main level is great. I think Croxa is great. Thoughtsies is great. Grace seems fine. Ren is a little bit medium. I think I'm gonna cut the Rens. Maybe I should be cutting the squirrel. But Squirrel is something that allows me to attack through. So I think that it's better for me to cut the Rens. Because this matchup is never going to be out grinding, right? Like, because my opponent's going to grind so much better than I do. And they're, like, they're, they, they kill me while they do that. <laughs> so I just need to try to be faster than they are. And I'm expecting this matchup to not be very good for me. Maybe it should be Croxa, because... I mean, I guess, like, a two-mana... A two-mana discard thing is just good enough. In a matchup like this, this opponent is going to require all of the pieces. Um, yeah. Kind of tilted, not going to lie. Kind of tilted, but my opponent just <laughs> top decking above average. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Um, yeah, I think I like this. I think I like this setup. Uh, push enable uh, bu bubble enables my push, but I think this is fine. Okay, on the play. This hand seems just not good enough. This hand seems quite powerful. So I'm gonna keep this, and I think I'm gonna bottom Mayhem Devil. There's no way I bought on the land. I think I'm just gonna mod bottom the aim of the I, I may I may regret that though. I may regret that. Hopefully no turn one gracer. My opponent is very, very good. Yep, nothing I can do now. Um, and sure, my opponent could have a Dryad and I don't have an answer to the Dryad, but, you know. I honestly don't know how I'm winning this game anyway. Like, I just have to draw Alpine Moon. I have to top deck Alpine Moon into... Um... What is this, Explorer? I didn't want to delete Thoughtsis until the last possible turn. Osage, okay. Sure. Yeah, I told you, one is very, very good. 
so how the hell do I win? How the hell do I win this game? Um, so Familiar's not gonna attack anymore. So because of that, I think I'm going to sack on Enste, but I'm not gonna bring it back. Yeah, because I, I can't, I just can't get through the Dryad. Like, if my opponent didn't have the Dryad, I would just, like, do both things so I can ping for one more damage. And every every ping is going to matter in, in this matchup. I mean, I guess, like, every ping mat matters in every single matchup with this deck. Um, But, yeah. Also, my opponent plays glacially slow. Really, really slow player. All right. They figure it out. So now if I draw a Mayhem Devil, this is just like one extra trigger that I get. That would require me getting lucky though. Just not, not what I've been doing so far. Definitely take the prime time there, of course. And now I'm actually gonna do this right here. And the reason for that is my opponent has to possess you, so I want to make sure that I can at least get one more activation of the of the witch's sovereign before my opponent blows it up. So if they have heating needle, if they have heating needle, that's potentially a problem, but I think it's fine. Let's see if my opponent top decked another titan. They do have the turn timber here. I'm gonna make a token. Okay. I mean that's that's good news for me. There's an amulet. They have no bounce land too. Which is kind of weird. Because they knew they were getting the amulet. So I guess that was just a mistake, like they should have held on to the bounce land. Particularly because there was no reason not to. Like I we know now that they had a castle, right? So I'm not gonna fetch because my opponent's gonna bosage you my oven. So now if I draw if I draw um, Mayhem Devil, I can cast it and I have two activations. I actually have three, which is nice. Nope. Um, that's the turn. I do get to gain three at least. Yeah, things not working out for us. Things definitely not working out for us. Gracer. The problem is we don't really have any draws that really, you know, open up the game. What could it be? <laughs> the wall of gracers. Um Okay. Well, I'm obviously going to trade monkeys for the construct now if I can. And I didn't trade last turn, so that maybe my opponent will just... Oh, they just drew the land that they were missing. Yeah, I think my opponent messed up. I think they should have... Uh, I think they punted. They should have held on to the, the bounce land there. <laughs> and their last card is Titan, of course, dude. That's insane. All right. All right, round number three. Um, well, this hand is fantastic, right? Now, the question is how do we sequence? I think we go... I mean, we definitely go turn one monkey. But I think we play it off of the Bloodstained Mire, so we can actually play Saga on two if we want to. 
So turn one monkey. Turn two, we can either Thoughtseize Brushland. Okay. So play that. Is this scales? This has to be scales, right? So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna thought seize right now. It is scales. Well good to know. Automaton could be a problem, but I think Ravager is gonna be a bigger problem. I can just block automaton all day. Well I guess I can't, but I'm gonna figure out a way to do it. Now, because they're gonna be able to get uh, the saga, the thing with the saga. Okay. Not a bad draw. Not a bad draw. I'm gonna send with the monkey to start things off. One is probably not gonna block. The Ravager? That's like actually good for me, right? That's a card that actively does something for me. So I think I'm going to cast it. <laughs> like it actually synergizes with my deck fairly well. <laughs> Um, strain a little bit. This has war though, but we're gonna be able to kill the saga token. I think I just get another witch's sovereign. Red, black. Let's release the mayhem. Yeah, this is pretty hot. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is this is pretty hot. Trade for monkey. All right, pass the turn. Bing. <laughs> this is so sick. Wow, I love that. All right. Um, what do we want? We don't have any artifact hate? Maybe it's because our, our artifact matchups are just fine. Don't think we want thought seizes. Maybe pirate spell them? For the Croxus. Yeah, this looks good to me. Let's see what's up. Um, it's kind of cool to see Scales still doing still doing this stuff. I'm a big, big fan of Scales being a deck. I think it's very, very cool. Um, his hand's not very, very cool though. Yeah, we're going to ship it. I'm gonna keep this one. What do we bottom though? I think I'm gonna be a greed monster. I'm gonna bottom Black Cliff Cliffs. No the Needle in this side world is also kind of weird. Okay. Good. Blood Crypt here. Monkey go. Maybe I should have gotten... Ugh, gross. Can we find an untapped land, please? It's not it. Hmm. 
Hmm. So they gave me a food for free there. I should have activated in response. At least we do get to Alpine Moon, which is not nothing. It is not nothing. Ursa's son. Also, I guess my opponent was in mood to six there. Didn't think about that. Savas and Relic. So unfortunately, we're not really doing anything here, which sucks. Our Saga token is going to be a 3-3. So that's kind of cool. My opponent can destroy their Ursa Vaz to grow the other thing. Sure, got my land. Don't have a Ravager, please. Another Ballista. These tokens are not small. At least I got that going on for me. So let's make another dude. And now we're gonna get Spring Lift Drum, I think. And we're going to. Do I swing? I think so. If I swing, opponent blocks with everything. Well, they can't. Actually, they probably just block with the Sabas. Yeah, I think we, we swing. I, think, I do think we swing. Take five. Familiar. And I can drain for two here. I think we just chill on it. Because if my one attempts to kill one of my constructs, I can, I can sack in response. Got my saga. Well, we're kind of doing it here, yeah. Um, all right, construct tokens do get do the, do the work. Do the dirty work. I was gonna get another construct this turn because of the spring leaf drum. All right, see you next run. All right, let's go. Um, this deck is really good at having turn one monkey. Maybe I'm very good at having turn one monkey. Must be the deck. Must be the deck. I don't see any other reasonable explanation anyway. Oh man. Give me no, no! <laughs> Don't have two of them. Damn it! They can thought cast, which is good. Now they can thought cast. Can we please turn one Emery? Jesus! That's a lot. <laughs> that's that's a lot. Um. Green source? It is a green source. So at least we do get to do something here. At least a little bit of something. Ursa Saga was exiled. Kind of dodged a bullet there. Um, I think it's better for me to not play this squirrel and next turn play square play both squirrels and we can sack the token to like grow both of them okay do place workers get sacrificed when they die that's not how that works right at least i doubt that's how it works
we're going to be able to put a lot of pressure on my opponent. And then play, replaying the Meme Knight is kind of annoying, but at the same time, it means that they're not drawing a card of Bubble. So me not having an answer for this Emery is slightly problematic, to say the least. And unlike, unlike my previous match where my tokens actually were larger than my opponent's, I really doubt that's going to be the case in this matchup. I guess we're about to find out. Whether this triggers or not, it doesn't. So if the opponent wants to do something here, they have to do it now. They don't, so we're going to swing. Now we can play something off of this. We could play an Emery, actually. That's kind of fun. Um, we could not play a thought cast or something. Never mind, we actually could. So blue one, blue, blue. It's kind of sick. All right. All right, we're doing things. We're doing things. Now we got a couple of three three squirrels, which is gonna are gonna be four fours next turn because of the Croxa. Uh... Um, so many random synergies with this stupid monkey, man. Opponent's constructs are gonna be keyword big. I do have the familiar, so I can start kind of doing that thing. And if I do find, if I do find um, an oven off the top, then these squirrels are going to be just massive. Prototype. Okay, still has, has an activated Emery. This is interesting. This is interesting. We're kind of trying to, you know, thread a little bit, trying to figure out where we can get our little edges. Mem Knight. Okay. That's fine. And they have enough to play a one drop and make a construct, I think. I don't. I could make my own construct, but I don't think that does anything for me. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five. It's going to be a five, five. This is going to trigger my squirrels. So I can't really attack, unfortunately. And then opponent can go find Shadow Spear, I would imagine. Shadow Spear means that I can't race. Mayhem Devil would be a great draw. Mayhem Devil probably wins the spot, actually. Mayhem Devil probably wins on the spot. Not looking super hot, though. Not looking super hot, our opponent's construct are significantly larger than ours, and I don't think there's too much we can do about it, which is the problem. They tap Enry for mana? Instead of drawing a card? There's no way that's right. I'm just gonna get Shadow Spear and equip. 
this doesn't count enchantments, right? No, only artifacts or creatures. So Saga being destroyed doesn't do anything. Oven means that these draw by two every turn. So there's that. So I need to find an answer to the Emery. Actually, if I find an answer to the Memnites, like these dudes become like actually manageable. So it feels like my opponent wants to do that this turn. They just want to set up an attack for eight, which I'm just going to take. Ugh, gross. Floodcast on a 2-2 flyer, not where I want to be. Uh, this, I've been really unimpressed by the TB tap lands in these decks. I think I probably have to do this here because next turn the Shadow Spear just threatens so much damage. So I think I just have to take the Chomp while I can in order to preserve my life total. So that doesn't do anything. So I'm just going to make a dude. Here's a Noven. Here's a drum. Play tapped land and say go, because I can't activate this anyway. So I'm just going to play the tapped land, save some life. We're not in good shape. I don't think we're in good shape. So they're going to suit up. Construct with Shadow Spear. Yeah, sick on Saga is brutal. So we probably need Mayhem Devil. I guess he doesn't even do it right like it is at this point. So opponent is going to go to 22. Ugh. <laughs> So the monkey is going to chump the 10-10. Ten -ten. No, we're not in good shape here. Monkey chumps here. I sack. That gives me familiar. Um, so block there. Sack. Make a dude. I guess there's no need to get the familiar just yet, I guess. And it can potentially be one extra ping if I top deck Mayhem Devil, which feels like the only way that I can win this game at this point. Mayhem Devil feels like it's the only card that matters. If I Mayhem Devil... Reality Chip. Why wouldn't they play that? First main. Weird. Okay. Um, not looking good here. Man Devil. Another Oven. Huh. Okay. We can actually just activate this. So, sack. These are these are five fives, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I can make my squirrels into eleven elevens. And then I can make a food and sack the food. I can make two foods by sacking the construct token. I think this works. So we're going to have to make a food, being, bring back familiar. Um, then... Sack for a food, the familiar. Get another food. Sack again. 
Then we're going to have to sack the construct that gives me two foods. Oh, but then familiar is not going to be in the graveyard. No, because I can sack the familiar to put it in the graveyard, I guess. Well, but then it doesn't do anything for me. Hmm. I think we're just going to die to these constructs. I'm going to give it a shot, but maybe I can get bailed out by my, by my opponent uh, missing a couple of... Missing a couple of points of damage last turn. Like they could attack, uh, the, the attack with the Thought Monitor was free and I would be at six. Because they already have two Chomp Blockers anyway. Sai Master Thopterist. Interesting. So I'm recreates two tokens. Yeah, the constructs are growing faster than the squirrels are. At least at this point, like next turn, I think we could have been able to make enough stuff. But it feels like exactly this turn, we're not gonna be able to. So I guess what we're gonna do is, we chump the construct that tramples with our construct, which is gonna be a five five. Yeah, that's that's too much. I think that's just too much. <laughs> Getting to the point where opponent needs three rows in order to fit all of their stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. We have been got. So I want at least two Alpine Moons. And I think I want Pirate Spellbomb. And maybe Push. Because, like, this answer, Psy. Well, the other ones don't. I think Croc is a little bit sketch. Because I'm pretty sure my opponent is going to bring some form of artifact. Um, eh, Graveyard Hate, sorry. Monkey, I'm, I'm probably going to cut the monkeys on the draw, but I think on the play they're probably fine. And do I want to have access to one? I think I want to have access to one Nihil Spellbomb that I can fetch with Saga. Try to go with something like this. All right. Um, probably not good enough of a hand, right? A little bit better. A little bit better. So I'm gonna. Um, I think I'm gonna keep the fetch. So let's go bubble. Bubble myself. There's an Alpine Moon on top. I kind of want to draw that, so I think I'm just going to play these and pass. Like, imagine how much easier previous match would have been if I had found that Alpine Moon. Now this coming turn, I can go familiar into uh, Saga. Or I can go just, you know, play Foothills and go Familiar Oven. Like, if I, if I don't have to play the Moon, like, if I don't see the the, the Saga from my opponent, I'm just not going to play it. It's no need for me to. And I can wait until it gives me even more value. Yeah, like right now, for example. Gonna get Stomping Ground, I think. So if we want to place this Saga, we're gonna be in really good shape. Odawara, the Soaring City. 
This is fine. The only thing I could potentially be, yeah, that's that's a nice little target for a bolt. What are you gonna do? Why would you tap the Embry there? I get a one two block in my one one as opposed to a one one training with my one one. Okay. I'm not gonna get back my, my little thing. I am gonna bolt that though. And I guess I'm gonna play the moon right here because next turn my mana is gonna be stuck activating the Sursa Saga. Also, I wanna resolve the moon under. Um, it's not Dispute. What's the name of the other one? Saga. Um, rebuke. Metallic Rebuke. Yeah, yeah, this turn I'm just gonna be activating Saga anyway. I'm playing into my opponent if they have another. They just threw a saga in the garbage. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't read Alpine Moon. <laughs> I guess it's a weird. It's a weird interaction. So I guess I don't really fault my opponent from not for not knowing how that works. Sure. So I'm not gonna waste this bolt on the mem knight it means my opponent i mean it doesn't really mean my opponent has one more mana like if it did i would consider it but like it just doesn't because now they have the wounds in a prototype and they could just you know tap here um it could mean that it's another blue mana so if my opponent's missing mana for ursa but yeah like you see it wouldn't have mattered now we do get to be down though which is nice you get uh, the saga party started. I just realized that this deck is not playing. Like this deck can get can make massive squirrels, but it's not playing shadow spear. Seems like a little bit of a waste. Back to bad monitors is very good. Contrasts are not going to be that large. Just going to be four fours. Kind of a beating, honestly. Kind of a beating. Go. Really hoping to dodge Ursa here. Ugh. That's so many thought monitors. Where are my squirrels? My squirrel, my Renin Six. My Mayhem Devil. Where are my good cards? Prismatic Cannon again? Interesting that they would go for that instead of going for killing my Alpine Moon. Well, that's dead. I don't have to kill it just yet. I just get I, I get to untap first and see what happens. That's bad news. That's very bad news. Because I can't really block it. Because now my... Ugh. That sucks. Um, it's going to be really hard to raise that now. Going to get... Tapped Blood Crypt. Can we please find... The dude. That's not it. 
That is not it, folks. Do it. Play a Giganta, though. I guess not even play the Giganta. Just put it in hand. <laughs> it's not even. It's not even that good. <laughs> Can't even play the Giganta, just put it in hand and just like stare at it with sadness. <laughs> As tears fall from our eyes. Oh. Does that mean I'm, I'm just dead right now? I think that means I'm just dead right now. Yeah, it definitely means I'm just dead right now. Okay, yeah, our, our deck kind of abandoned us there. Yep, that would have been pretty good. That would have been pretty solid. Um, Probably not good enough though. Probably not good enough, but you know, at least it would have given us potentially a shot. All right, let's play the last round, see how we do. Last one. Um, I'm gonna keep this hand. It's a one lander, we have two looks. So let's first see what my order opponent's up to over here. Playing counter spell. Well, hopefully we can dodge a removal spell. We do have to find a land drop, so. Lured Murktide. Flame Slash. Alright, that's not Lured Murktide, that's Blue Moon. Alright. Snapcaster counter in my opponent's hand. Ooh, I like that. So I can go a couple of different ways here. I can just, I think I'm gonna play Saga actually and kind of force my opponent to do something because the tokens play around the counter spell and I know that exists very, very nicely. So this sort of forces my opponent to tap out. They don't. Um. I think I bring it back. Just try to pressure. Ice my saga. Okay. Hoping to dodge Blood Moon. Um, I'm trying to think whether I want to... I'm trying to think whether I want to... Um, fetch for a basic swamp. I think I do. Basic swamp. Make my dude. Gonna get another oven. Same for one. And slowly but surely. Just grinding my opponent down. Opponent's gonna be able to like snap. Gonna be able to snap counter spell. Uh, snap flame slash if they want to. They can bolt the construct on in step two. Like they have a couple of options. Oh, they have a couple of options here. They're slowly losing to my familiar engine, though. So they better find a way to answer it. I'm assuming opponents playing Blood Moon, based on how they fetched, how they sequenced their lands. And just based on the spells that they played so far. Um, 20 target, destroy an artifact. Wait. They shock here? So I just make a food sacking the cat and it survives? Yikes. I mean, uh, that's good for me. 
Here we go. <laughs> I don't think my opponent really thought that one through. <laughs> I don't think they thought that one through. At least not carefully enough. Play this. Play this. Dude's growing. Dude's growing. We get two foods for our trouble, which is kind of nice. And I guess I'm going to wait until they fetch. Now we're going to be able to bubble. So now they have Snapcaster Prisma Command, which is a little bit scary because it stops my engine. But it means that I'm finally gonna be able to. Wait, they charm? Well, that's not that good. For for them. Okay. So they steal my, my oven, but now what I'm gonna do is end step, get back my cat. Uh, ooh, we can, we probably just play the grist here, right? Just resolve grist. Plus, so you go. I didn't want to suck the bubble because it's a free trigger, but maybe I should have. Bounce the token. So I assume they have bolt. I'm assuming they have bolt to finish off the grist. They do, okay. So we're going to land please, squirrel. Pretty unlucky. That's pretty unlucky because if we had found land, I get to like hit the Jace and then like sack in order to ping it. I probably am gonna end up pinging, pinging the Snapcaster now. We've been playing our own counter spell very nicely though. But the problem is now if my opponent has another Snapcaster, they get to snap ball the Mayhem Devil. Putting me in sort of an awkward spot. I really need to hit there. Really, really need to hit my my land. Because that would have allowed me to clear the Jace. But now Jace is threatening to just take over the game. It's at two though. It's at two. See what opponent draws. Just a basic island. Okay. My thoughts in here. Uh, 
Let's start by attacking the Jace. Jace goes down to one. Play land. Play squirrel. This is obviously bait. I, mean, I guess it's bait, but it's not that bad of a bait anyway, because like we're threatening to just activate the squirrel here, which I think it's what I'm gonna do. I could alternatively just wait. And so many lines here. So what I can do is I can crack and I think I'm gonna sacrifice the familiar to the squirrel's ability. Unless the opponent is stealing the squirrel. In which case I'm gonna sack the food token. Well, I guess that doesn't make sense. No, never mind. They're gonna steal the squirrel. Um Oh, I guess like itself. That's so much better. I can just sack itself. Yeah, this is like insanely good for me. <laughs> this is so good for me. Awesome. Yeah, so everything turned out in the best possible way. Everything turned out in the best possible way. So now next turn we're gonna get to attack the J, so opponent's gonna be forced to do something. And then whatever they do, we get to Thoughtseize play plus Mayhem Devil. I'm kind of surprised the opponent wouldn't plus there, because by plusing it means that the familiar is just not that much of a problem. Maybe they have Blood Moon, or they're looking for a Blood Moon, and they think that you know they can't beat the Saga, so like the Saga puts too much pressure on them. But even if my opponent has like a way to kill the familiar, that's even better for me. Because that means that I just get to Thought Seize, take the counter spell, then play Mayhem Devil, and then sack the food to get back the Cauldron Familiar and ping the Jace for lethal. Opponent's considering being in the Steam Vents. I knew about the island and they chose to still show me the Steam Vents. So the island is now in their hand. And I guess they just played it. So there, there's that. <laughs> But now, like, my point is to just use removal on this stupid cauldron familiar. Otherwise, it's just gonna clear the Jace straight up. So, that's so awkward for them. Not a big fan of how my opponent's been playing this. Snapcaster. Opponent targets Charm. Okay. So that's fine. I do think I steal Thoughtseize. I do think I steal Thoughtseize. And the reason to Thoughtseize is to like, kind of force my opponent to like choose something to do here. Like, I think I'm just going to take the counter spell now. But now... I just passed the turn. They're gonna get to draw two, which is a little bit scary. Maybe I should have just jammed the Mayhem Devil into it, but this also means that I just get to... I just get to Mayhem Devil next. I mean, I just get to make some, some Construct tokens. And we still get back the Familiar next turn, which still threatens to, to clear the Jace straight up. Opponents out of charms in the bin. Flame slash. I wonder why. It kills the dryad. Nobody really plays thought knots here, so that's not really a reason to play this. The reality cheap, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like I'd rather play something that's instant speed. Hmm. 
Merktide. Merktide's big. Sure. Merktide is pretty big here. On tap. What about draw? Here's a token. Here's another oven. Here's another oven. So oven can turn this construct into two. So if this if this resolves. I'm actually trading with the Merc that region, like if, if they block the construct token, which is very nice. Snapcaster, probably counterspell, I assume. Eh, kind of sucks. Um, so now that's an 8 8, so I can swing. With this, sack familiar. Oh, but then I can't sack the token. Never mind. I can't do everything. So I guess we're just gonna chill. Just continue pinging. I guess this also means that my opponent can just crack the oven. They can crack with the oven, sorry, to make some food. Make it a little bit harder for me to kill them. But this Merktide can't attack. This Merktide is going to be holding holding back on defense. Unless they have another one. And Jace did so much work. Mm-hmm. There's a land. Opponent can make some food. From Snapcaster as well. Probably gonna have to jam these this Mayhem Devils, I think. Second Jace. That's so aggressive. That is so aggressive, jeez. Huh. Second Merktide. Okay, so this means that we're gonna get to resolve uh, Mayhem Devil. Is that gonna be enough? Um, is that gonna be enough? So. Definitely, it's better for me to Mayhem Devil than to Sock and Sun. Um, I guess we get to double Mayhem Devil now. <sighs> Still led to this guy, right? So, play second Mayhem Devil. Using the first one, we get four triggers. We get four triggers. 
because we get to suck the familiar and then suck. Oh no, we can we can suck multiple foods in response. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Yeah, found the line. That's that's what we're gonna do. So the way that this works is, I think this works the way I, I intended to. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, I guess I'm not gonna do the bold. They don't. Okay, so um, we're gonna sack familiar. This is two triggers. And now uh, the lethal line is to cauldron familiar, sack of food with disability on the stack. We hold priority. And then we're gonna activate it again. And then, whoops, uh, there. Boom, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Double Merc Tide. Uh, uh, uh. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. That was cool. Um, I think I want relics. Relics are probably better than spell bombs, I would say. Probably cut the bolts. Obviously, this combo is insane. I can just cut a bubble. So the thing is that relic allows me to relic over spellbomb. Spellbomb, sure, like it sacrifices so it synergizes with your devil and everything. But what relic does is it allows me to keep my opponent's graveyard in check as opposed to Nihil Spellbomb, which is just like a one shot thing, and then that's it. So because of that, I think I'd rather be on the Nihil on the relic side of things. Opponent did not show me the RC, but they showed me multiple Merc Tides, and it's gonna be easier for me to keep to keep up with the Merc Tides with Relic than with than with Spellbomb. And they also showed me multiple Snapcasters, so I think that's better. Also, we got our anti Bloodman tech in our sideboard, which is very nice. Anti Bloodman tech obviously being Giganta, because we can cast it on the Bloodman. <laughs> Um, oh. I'm gonna keep this hand. I'm gonna get super punished when it doesn't work out. But Ugh. let's play drum. We need to find the black source, like right now. It's not a black source. It's gonna pass the turn. Um, the good thing is that one, once we do find a black source, we're gonna be able to play both. Uh, I'm not gonna play. I'm not playing the saga there, and there is some. Maybe I should have. Yeah, I should have played the saga actually. I don't think. I don't think about it because I get to like main phase make a construct and then just thought is my opponent. So. Now I'm going to be one turn behind on that. Yeah, I should have just not played Saga there. Um, did find the Swamp, though. Opponent can counter this. I think they're just going to Archmage Charm my Witches over instead. Just what they did last turn. Last uh, last game. And then I get to Thoughtseize them. <clears throat> Which is terrible use of my mana, but I definitely want to thought this a Jace because I have no way to pressure it just yet, right? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely playing Blood Moon. 500% playing Blood Moon. So I imagine they're just going to steal my Oven. Oh. That's somehow even better for me because it means that you know they're discarding cards when I'm about to thought seize them. And not only that, but like they got like a little bit of uh, they got a little bit of um, selection, but that's even better. So I'm gonna be choosing from you know the best cards that my opponent could find. So. So 
so opponent can go cease. I don't think I care too much about the relic. They can go cease your swamp into bold your cat. But if they do, then I just play my saga. So I think I'm gonna uh, I think I'm gonna take the borrower actually, because the borrower answers my saga token while the other cards don't. So I think taking the borrower there is, is the better option. It's close though. It's close and I could see arguments for taking the relic and I could see arguments for taking the spreading seas. I don't really see I don't really see any argument for taking the bolt, but I could see arguments for any of the other two cards. I think that the better option is the Brazen Borrower. Okay, good to know about that. So now we're gonna lead on Familiar. Yeah, opponent's gonna bolt, like we predicted. Like that's just so good for us. Like my opponent bolted my cold room Familiar. That's just so good for us. Um, you got me, opponent. The relic shenanigans. Um, so let's play familiar. Let's play squirrel. Let's thought seas spreading seas. Let's play my Ursa saga. Putting crack relic on end step, which means that Murktide is super far away. Also, it exiled their bolt. Oh, vomit. That's pretty good. That's probably one of the best things that my opponent could have done there. So, uh, definitely a good draw for them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's also a pretty good draw for me. That was uh, a vomit sort of situation right there. We're gonna get super god by dress down. Gonna get super super god by dress down. But if they don't have the dress down, then we're cooking. Or yeah. Um, they have one last one card in hand, and I think if they do have dress down, they're just gonna get me anyways. There's nothing I can really do, so I'm just gonna make the token now. Get in for one more point. So whatever they attempt to like steal or anything like that, we just sack to the oven. I mean, the opponent's down to one card, though. Like, they need to dress down into something very good. Like, dress down into Jace. Like, that, that's the only way that I can that I can see myself lose in this game. Yeah. All right. That was, that was kind of sweet. That was kind of sweet. Like, very, very cool deck. Super nice interactions. Wrapping up this league. Um, this was a lot of fun. This deck was a lot of fun. It was like a little bit clunky in a couple of situations, and I think I kept more landers with this deck than I've kept in a really long time. Like the mana base seems a little bit complicated. Um, the cliffs in particular were kind of rough, and even though we don't really have that many uh, green um, green requirements, like if we like our green cards, I feel like they're one of the more just the more of like pound for pound powerful in our deck. So the other ones kind of rely on on synergies like, like your squirrel, your familiar, your oven. Like all of this, uh, your devil, all of these rely on um, synergies while Ren and Six and Grist are just, you know, good cards that happen to synergize with what we're trying to do anyways. But, you know, it's they're just good cards. Um, as far as... The main deck seemed fine, like I felt okay with the main deck. 
So, um, so to wrap that up, that, up that thought, uh, we only have seven fetch lands. I think I would play like maybe one or one fetch land more, maybe two more fetch lands. Also, like your fetch lands uh, do work really well with mayhem devil, so you you get like a little bit more extra, a little bit more extra value there. Also, your fetch lands, I think. No, never mind. I, I was gonna, I was gonna say that they should all be Verdant catacombs, but uh, that's just not true because sometimes you're gonna want to fetch your basic, uh, your basic mountain. I do think that you can really afford to play to play your your basic forest by the way uh, and i just realized that we're playing castle lock twain which i saw in the deck deck but then we literally never saw that's really that's pretty funny um so besides that the main deck felt fine the bubbles were kind of awkward i have to say sure like it has some synergy with the squirrel and it has some synergy with the mayhem devil but i feel like um like against the um, the emery deck we actually in game one we got just chump block locked in a way like our opponent just had a couple of memnites that they were just re they could just replay with emery and they, they just locked that out of the game and hammer is gonna put ourselves in, in in kind of that situation as well fairly easily so i wonder if we should try to make room for a single shadow spear the thing is that there's like you have your construct tokens you have your squirrel and then you have your um your croxa like anything else doesn't really work super well with uh, with your spear because it's not really that large but at the same time you don't need the, the creatures to be that large you just need to be able to race back when your opponent's racing you like we our opponent put a shadow spear on the construct they were just like that's that's it like we can can't do anything about it and like we can never race it ever in a million years so put us in a little bit of an awkward spot um i think that artifacts are super popular right now so i could i could i could see myself wanting something like an ancient grudge in the cyber, maybe like a grudge or two. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Like we can definitely cannot afford to play Force of Vigor, which would be you know like the best card for that job. And I'm trying to think like Nature's Claim or um, the the one that for one mana destroys uh, enchantment or artifact CMC equals three or less. So that is sort of interesting as well. Um, but yeah, I definitely felt like. We were a little bit behind against all of the artifact decks, and with Ursa Saga being as popular as it is, like sure, Alpine Moon answers Saga, but you know, at the same time, it doesn't answer Saga retroactively, right? Like it only answers Saga preemptively. And if your opponent just got like a little bit of value, they got like a construct or two. Sure, our constructs are fairly large. Uh, I, I don't want to say like we are a pretty good Saga deck. Like we're, we're not like Amulet, for example, is. It's it's not really a saga deck in terms of enacting the saga game plan. It's it's more of a saga. It's it's always just like a stupid you know amulet suspend two amulet right, uh, which is great for that deck obviously. But um, like it's not like the, the amulet constructs are usually like two twos. You know like it, it's not that impressive. This one actually has we had like four fours and six sixes fairly reliably. So definitely this is a better saga deck that uh, that uh, like amulet, but. At the same time, um, like we just got out Saga by the Affinity deck super handily, and I feel like we would want, like we would get super out Saga by the um, by the Hammer decks as well. Like so, I feel like there there are a reasonable amount of uh, artifact decks in the format that make me kind of want that kind of stuff, and also I don't know how I feel the Cyborg seems like it has a couple of holes in in it. Like, sure, we played against control and like, we drew pretty well, but at the same time, like, if we had played against blue-white control, and I mean blue-white with prismatic endings and, like, March of Underworld, uh, Otherworldly Light or, like, whatever the, the new instant is, we would have gotten destroyed. Like, I don't think we can ever in a gazillion years beat the blue-white decks. Like, this is... We're not talking about, you know, the blue-white deck play Detention Sphere and, like, Detention Sphere exiling our Witches. So, like, the blue-white deck can play at a rate that is so, so, so much better right now between Ending and, and, and the Otherworld-like thing. Not to mention that the Marge of Otherworld-like just exiles our Saga straight up. So, definitely, I feel like we would have a heinous control matchup. It's possible that uh, that Pond just, you know, shows up in the comments and corrects me and tells me that the blue-white matchup is, is, is actually great. But um, I'm not as good as he is. And also, I, uh, I I still feel like 
it's just not it just doesn't work that it's not gonna work that well so i would definitely change the sideboard maybe add some like duresses and stuff like that maybe add some um, some angel grudges or or something of of that ilk terminate is also an interesting addition to i guess murktide and decks like that but we kind of got around murktide fairly fairly easily right there so i'm not really sure that we need that like i do feel like against blue red murktide we probably are, are pretty favored against the, the blue red murktide deck specifically so i'm not too worried about that but still you know like I feel like there's a lot of... Uh, I, I remember Spike building something similar to this and playing Golden Bombardment. I don't know if you want to go the Bombardment route, because like the Bombardment card is just, just a synergy piece. Like it's, I think I'd rather have access to, again, like the cards like this that are just so um, so much better, like in Grist and like Squirrel. Uh, Unearth is interesting, though. Like Spike's list uh, was playing Unearth, and I think that's very interesting. Like You can get back your Devils, you can get, get back your Grist, you get a lot of value there. Um, but yeah, there's uh, this deck. This deck looks like a lot of fun. Like I actually had a really, uh, really good time playing it. Uh, lots of interactions, lots of uh, little edges to be gained, and uh, you know decks like this where you're just you can master it. You know, like I I love decks that I can spend time and you know just master them. Uh, I mean, like that's why I've been playing Amulet for like almost eight years at this point. So uh, because of that, I think that this deck has legs in that sense and yeah and again it's 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 what i would consider a fairly untuned deck list and we still managed to beat uh, some some real decks right like we didn't really play against meme decks in fact we actually did not do well against the meme decks specifically <laughs> uh, i guess amulet amulet is not a meme deck but uh, so yeah amulet the amulet matchup seems just unsolvable so probably not not even worth uh, trying to trying to solve it anyway uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much, Punt, for the donation. Really, really appreciate it. Allows me to continue doing what I'm doing here, creating content for you folks. And uh, if you would like to support the stream, you know, you can check the description below. If you would like to uh, get some coaching time with myself, you can also find the description in uh, the information in the description. Hook me up with a like and subscribe button, which is a free way that you can support the stream. And, you know, leave me a comment below if you did enjoy the video. My name is Francisco. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.